All right, where's my brushes? Gonna kill the opacity. Oh, yeah, be our life. All right, uh, hi guys. Uh, well, hey everybody. Welcome to our little stream. So today Tom and I um, wanna uh, talk about uh, talk about staying in shape for for art and maintaining the muscle memory. And uh, you know, all of us have busy s schedules and we do things for work and for for life. And a lot of times there's not not enough time to do uh, your daily drawing routine so one of the things that I learned throughout my uh, drawing uh, career is that uh, I, uh, this uh, kind of warm set of warm-up exercises that I do to uh, keep in shape and uh, this is basically a very standard set of, 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 uh, of line drawings that I learned from Peter Han and uh, John Park. Um, I have some weird noises from your side, uh, Tom. Are you okay there? Yeah, I don't hear it. Uh, maybe it's my, is it me hitting the tablet, maybe? Maybe. Okay. I'll, I'll try to be quieter. So uh, what I'm doing here is I drew a one vertical line and now I'm trying to freehand a straight line and then I go over it to maintain my accuracy and trying to improve it over time and uh, I'm going about you know eight ten times over the same line and then moving on and you, you can also see I'm doing it uh, a short a medium and a long line and this is my primary uh, practice for for you know, being able to draw straight lines. What are you doing on your end, Tom? Oh uh, yeah, I'm doing the warm up. Same stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was looking at your screen and I drew a crappy line. And. Uh, your lines, uh, if, if you're just starting, your lines are going to be hairy, they're going to be something like this. Don't feel discouraged. The more you do it, the better you get. Yeah, also, if that first line that you lay down isn't a good line, just undo and redo it. If you're using it, especially if you're using a tablet where you're... Well, I uh, actually, drawing. I don't think undoing is a good thing. Do, draw over it and... Uh, and uh, make it better. But yeah, yeah. If, well, I think what Peter Hunt talks about is if, if you, he, truing up the line, right? But if like, if you do something like crazy, like, whoops, whoops, like, I don't know if you can see mine, but like, there's no fixing this, this kind of line. There is, I, I'm sharing your screen now. So yeah. Yeah, yeah something yeah, like yeah, this. There's... Yeah, definitely don't feel. Yeah, but if you can get like that, that's good enough. Cause then you're just gonna try to true it up. Okay, so I'm back to my screen. Uh, that's a pretty crappy line, but let's try to get it better. And um, if, if you do, do want to do it traditionally, uh, I recommend uh, uh, to use a multi liner, something like a Stedler uh, pigment liner, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Uh, and uh, Try, yeah, try, try using a, a multi liner and paper. Definitely uh, challenging and uh, unforgiving uh, medium. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using pencils or uh, a ballpoint pen is fine, but the problem with ballpoint pen is that uh, it uh, tends to leave, leave that groove in a in in a paper. So it kind of makes your life a little bit easier because uh, you can kind of feel the the 
groove in, in, in the paper and draw along it. Uh, while multiliner is, is basically ink, right? So it doesn't leave, uh, it doesn't affect the surface of the paper. So when, when you're done with straight lines, uh, I like to try diagonals, especially something like this where it goes in perspective and then try hitting it again. Diagonals are much harder. You kind of want to aim for the end of the line or the corner, the next corner that you're working with. Yeah, don't don't, don't look at the tip of a, of a pen, but kind of slightly ahead of it. So you know where your pen is going. This is all about training muscle memory. I just realized we don't have any music playing in the background. This video is going to be boring as shit. Okay, so then uh, circles. Circles are hard. Um, one thing that I don't often realize is when I'm trying to draw and like I, it's just you know I can't I can't do it. And my lines are all wiggly and my circles are crappy. And then doing these exercises made me realize uh, that my the way my tablet is set up, my Cintiq and my chair, my posture is bad. My my chair is rotated halfway through and actually not tall enough, not raised high enough to kind of match with my uh, Cintiq. And uh, the way you're sitting by your computer actually has a pretty big impact on, you know, how, how much uh, of a movement your, your elbow has and how, how comfortably you can draw a straight line without, you know, doing wiggles. So, just something to keep in mind. So circles, uh, that's gonna be bad, I warned you. I like to just uh, use my original lines to try to get them in. And you can see I'm kinda ghosting them out, so I'm moving my, uh, 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 my uh, forearm in this uh, circular fashion, and then I'm pressing on the tab tablet to get, get it in. Look, that was almost perfect, except it wasn't. Um, so Tom is doing some, uh, some drawings of a boot. Want to tell us about Yeah, I just, I just tried to pick something fun for today. Yeah, I think, uh, just, uh, if, if like these, these, uh, line drawings can be very tedious, but if you want to spice it up and make it more interesting, just pick something random, something small, that's not going to take you four hours. And just spend 20 minutes on it and, you know, get get your drawing back in, in shape. Um, another thing uh, I like to do is uh, curves. You put some dots on the uh, on your canvas and you try to connect them with the, the curve. All, all of these exercises are very well documented and described in Scott Robertson books, uh, How to Draw, and How to Render. He's got amazing, uh, amazing books on, on, uh, on, on th this types of, uh, you know, routine exercises to help you improve your draftsmanship. Uh, definitely recommend. Hitting the same curve second time is really hard. I'm 
embarrassing myself on the internet. <laughs> don't look, guys. <laughs> don't look. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't watch the stream. You know. <laughs> So the part part of the reason we are doing this is uh, Tom and I we have a very busy schedules and it's very hard to commit to like a two hour game dev session that uh, you know is in depth and uh, you know covers all the things that we want to cover after doing ten hours of programming or like. T t eight hours of, of game design so we we thought hey why well we need to we we, we want to do a little bit more of a you know art practices together and uh, uh that type of stuff so why won't we actually we thought why won't we actually stream it so we can get into a habit of having this quicker smaller streams that will force us to um, release the content out in the wild without you know committing to something uh, th that we can't do uh, due to our schedules so yeah you know just doing what you're you get you get good at what you do and we want to we know we want to stream more so having something like this where it's a very low commitment i'm just this is stuff that we're doing every day anyway we're just doing it on our own usually mm -hmm. and we thought that it might be interesting to share it i'm sure that other people uh, have similar tr ways they try to get their day started or try to own their day or whatever and it's not going to be uh, just line drawing exercises every day uh we, we could yeah uh, I, I want to i definitely want to do some oculus uh some vr sculpting and some other stuff uh like that yeah i have three three d code uh you know ready for uh for use so what i'm doing here now is this is a form exercise i'm i created random uh you know silhouettes and now i'm trying to turn them into an actual 3d forms using lines only um, this is a very handy exercise to uh, learn how you know how the form works in 3D. So what I'm doing here is I'm literally just you know adding lines to turn a shape a flat shape into a 3D form. A lot of people don't realize how much drawing affects your sculpting abilities. Uh, when uh, back when I was in college, I I went for a three year uh, you know the art art college, and I dropped out of my third final year because it was just you know it was a it was too boring, and I wanted to learn ZBrush, I wanted to learn anatomy, and instead of that, we we were doing like a recap of animation for first six months, so. I dropped out, and what I ended up doing is I, I, I was drawing anatomy, like parts of human body, uh, like muscle groups and bones, for, you know, six months. Uh, didn't touch a ZBrush a single time, and then when I, by the time I was done with the, kind of got sick of the anatomy 2D drawings, I went back to ZBrush, and I realized that my sculpting abilities have significantly improved because I understand. Uh, the the form much better than I used to. What do you have on your screen, Tom? Yeah, I think there's a, a a large part of it too is just having confidence in your hands, uh, which you get a lot with, I think, when you're doing like actual physical clay sculpture, is like you can measure the the tactile feedback of you know how hard am I pressing and is what's the surface like and you know you can feel whether a piece of your armature is and really stable you get that but when you're doing it all virtually or even you know even on paper you get that pushback you know that the grid of the paper and so kind of like if you were visually impaired or whatever you, you would try to tune other senses to 
give you the same kind of feedback. Yeah. And one of the things, if you're watching Alex when he's doing 2D work, it's almost like he's carving the shape out of the the ink on the page or in the, on the screen. And he's creating sort of a, a space with the color or with the value, especially when he's doing the silhouette. Um, and that's kind of, for me, that's where I, I want to get back to that place where I have that, that confidence and comfort level that the mark I want to make with my hand is the one that's going to show up on the screen. As far as what I'm working on today, I'm just, I just picked something from a mood board that I've been putting together for a piece that I want to do. All right, so more organic, um, it kind of look like a, a corals on the bottom of the ocean. The trick here is to try to break up, break down these shapes uh, without turning them into this static grid. Uh, that's like the first intention that people have, especially if you are a 3D artist, you want to kind of create this perfect topology so your faces aren't, aren't uh, stretched. Uh, but the problem with this uh, is your object becomes very static really quick <laughs> because there is no flow and there's no um, like a kind of contrast between uh, the size of the subdivisions that you're creating uh, so and you can see my first ones were kind of like if you measure this distance from here to here from here to here it's actually kind of very evenly subdivided and that's what I'm trying to to avoid is uh, I want to avoid equal subdivisions and make it into a more dynamic, uh, dynamic shape. And this, in a nutshell, is how you know how sci-fi designs work. That you, you see uh, something like you know Transformers, where everything, ever uh, like the 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 surface of the of that robot is super highly subdivided and there's tiny details all over the place and you have no idea where to look at right and then there is something like robocop which is like one of the most iconic designs sci-fi designs of all time and there's giant areas of just flat metal and then there's areas of high frequency details and it, it creates visual contrast and you know forces you to look at focal points I love Robocop, if you haven't gotten that yet. So this kind of is a, is, a, is a very baby step towards that uh, whole um, notion of, you know, subdividing shapes in a non-equal fashion, non-uniform fashion, I guess. Another thing is, you know, trying to curve your lines to emphasize that the the, sh the form of the of the object one of the things that I realized uh, early on when I was getting into Peter Hans uh, cl uh, classes at C CGMA and is that I want to be able to draw uh, I, I want my lines to to interpret uh, what's what's the best way to say it I want to be able to draw the with, gesture. Or? No, I I want to be able to draw with my lines, in a way that somebody can look at it and tell exactly what material I have in mind. Without without you know relying on rendering or photo bashing or painting, because that's that's kind of to me is is where the the mastery of of the line uh, is in is where. When you have a material that's, you know, uh, a fabric, and it's like you you add a few lines, and suddenly, in, instead of just uh, kind of lines, you, you you start seeing a material, right, or or a rock where it's 
and I'm doing very cra crappy drawings, but where you use lines to kind of create the texture and emphasize the material. But you also have to keep in mind that the texture has to wrap around the object to to sell the form, right? So, and that's what I mean when I, you know, trying to learn how to curve my lines to emphasize the, the silhouette of the object. Also, I like how my fabric looks nothing like fabric and my rock look, looks like a turd. But that, don't, that means that I haven't reached my mastery level yet. So yeah, um, exercises like this, uh, like I have, I have my to-do list. Uh, I create a to-do list for every day of, of my day <laughs> of my life, and uh, every day I have a ten-minute drawing warm-up uh, on my to-do list, and it helps me to stay in shape. And it doesn't really doesn't take that long, only you know a few minutes, ten minutes max, and you're you're ready to go. Um, one last uh, exercise that I want to go through. Um, we, we don't we don't want to run this stream for you know longer than 10 15 minutes and hopefully we'll be able to run it uh, either daily or every every other day. Um, uh, one last exercise is uh, drawing boxes in a perspective. If you're struggling with your perspective, this is number one thing to do. You just start drawing a box try to connect the, all the lines and do the draw through. So meaning that you're drawing a wireframe in 3D. So box number one, pretty crappy. Oh well. Box number two. And I think I'm tr rushing my lines. That's why I'm not very precise. So I'm gonna try to slow down. I hope the sound works. We didn't test the sound. <laughs> I can switch, I can switch over real quick and check it. Please tell me sound works. So just yeah, a lot of boxes on one page, uh, very tedious and kind of scary exercise because you know boxes like perspective art is hard and uh, you know it's really easy to mess up a box. You'd think it's simple, but it's hard and it's it's challenging, especially if you're doing it traditionally. You have this whole fear of you know uh, writing in your a page of your sketchbook. Uh, but if you do five, ten pages of these, and then go back to the, the the last technical drawing that you were working on, I can guarantee you're gonna uh, find, you know, the perspective much simpler, uh, and you will be able to spot some of the errors that you you had in your past sketches. Here you can see I messed up, so I'm just gonna draw over and connect it properly. So is the sound working? Audio. Yeah, audio is fine. Okay. And uh, try different proportions of the boxes and different scales. We can do a little rectangle here. I'm a little bit imprecise because uh, I need excuse to be imprecise. I'll just shut up and keep drawing my boxes. Um, just if, sketches, dude. Yeah, if you feel uh, adventurous or you want to challenge yourself, try combining boxes to create uh, mega boxes. So for example, if you grab this one and we can add an extrusion. And the trick here is to, you know, stay in line with the original box, which I don't think I'm actually doing here. So let's do something like this. Wow, this is a, this is a pathetic box. So 
when when you uh, you know added the box, um, I think uh, if you look at it, it's kind of a little bit hard to interpret. So uh, what I like to do is add a little bit of line weight to help the form, and this goes for traditional drawings as well. You just grab a thicker multi-liner and you create a box. So you can see it's a little bit easier to interpret. You can also, you know, maybe make it a little bit more interesting by rounding it up or something. Beveling the box. Oh, I'm cheating. I'm starting to use shift and click. Don't do that. Or do. It's your sketch. But No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get out of it what you put into it, right? Yeah. Bevel the box. Bad beveled box. Jesus. I think having the watch on my wrist doesn't help either. Put it on the other wrist. I can't do it on my right wrist. I'm sure you can. Can't means won't do. Yeah, I know. Okay, another bad box. So yeah, uh, you get the idea. Um, all of my boxes here are kind of all the same size, so maybe try experimenting, like go crazy. Let's see. And like try to overlap them. I have pages of my sketchbook that just have a crazy amount of boxes. My therapist says it's a good thing to do. I don't have a therapist, it was a joke. That would be me. Yeah, you're my therapist. Hmm. We we call we have a we have a daily call. We talk about Alex's feels. Everybody knows that. Yeah. If it's your first time here, understand that Alex's feelings are a regular topic of conversation. I have my feelings. I'm high on believings. What? Oh my god. No. What? No. 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 Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, so. Let yeah, me... so you can see Alex is working, and I'm being totally self-indulgent today. Well, you you have a boot that you started applying highlights to, which I wouldn't That's do. Nice. I would focus on on the overall shape and the line. Shut up! I'm going to do what I want to do. Don't tell me what to do. <sighs> All right. You're not the boss of me. Okay, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this, and we're gonna have another one of them. Uh, Fairly, fairly shortly. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, let's tomorrow, do it tomorrow. Unless, unless I'm dead after personal training. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, <laughs> even if uh, if Tom is dead, after personal training, we're going to do this. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a good one. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Wait, I don't know how to stop the, the share. Is this button? I don't have a shortcut set up. Oh, there it is.